Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today's video is going to be for truly new users of Canvas who um, are on a tight timeline. They need to get their course up and running quickly and they're not really sure where to start. So what we're going to do, this is going to be two videos long. The first one right now, we're going to tour this practice class that you can use to play around with or to tweak to make your own class. We're going to take a tour of what's in here and then I'm going to show you how to import it into your um, canvas. And then the second video will be how to change the colors and the pictures and the fonts so you can customize it to match the needs of your class. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So in this particular class, um, I've set it up with a banner. Now this is not a Bitmoji banner, nothing in here is clickable. It's just heading up the page saying what's going on in here. And then buttons, these are the clickable items. Okay, so in this particular class, I'm starting off with Meet Mrs. Lawrence. Probably after about a month of class, I would take this button and move it down to the end. But in the beginning, it's important for the kids. They want to know who their teacher is. So the way I have my um, All About Me information set up is I put it in a discussion board. And so I dropped it in the discussion board so that the kids can learn about me with a, a a PowerPoint slide that I made, but then I'm also going to ask them to post a reply to these discussions with their own PowerPoint slide so that each class will have a running list of 30 slides, um, one for each student in the class. So we can kind of all get to know each other very quickly. Okay, so I have a banner here. Again, nothing clickable. It just says meet the teacher and some directions on what we're doing. So step one, take a look at my All About Me slide. And then I'm going to have them design their own slide and they're going to upload it to this discussion board. So I've put this slide on my Canva link and in the next video I'll show you how to access this and edit it if you want to use it for yourself as well. And then this is what it would look like when the kids would post it. So it would have their little picture and their name and then they would post up their PowerPoint slide. And then we can go in and make comments on it. Or you can turn off the comments if you don't want the kid to be able to talk. But I want to leave comments on every kid's slide to say something. I think individualized attention is really important in an online setting. And so just examples of the slides. They're going to drop it in. We're going to comment. I put some notes to you guys about how to customize if you miss the second video. Okay. So that is, and we're going to go back to home. To get to our home page, that's my first button. Meet Mrs. Lawrence, a discussion board. Then we have the daily agenda. And I like to think of the daily agenda is when kids walk into your classroom, you know, they usually talk to you at the door and then they'll take a look at the whiteboard. And so I try to mimic that in an online environment. I have here the daily agenda. Um, the first thing the kid says, what are we doing today, Miss Lawrence? And then I explain, okay, so today we're going to learn about our course goals and our objectives. This is like the first day of class. And the kid, okay, why are we doing that? Well, because, you know, we're getting really close to high school here. I teach eighth graders. And so I try to make there a lot of urgency with my class. Like, this is the last year for you to level up, so let's do it. And then how are we going to do it? These are the items that would be on the whiteboard, so like your agenda. First we're going to do this, and then we're going to do that, and then we're going to do that. Okay, and then the kids always want to know if they have homework, and so I also include that on the daily agenda. Okay, so the daily agenda is just basically my whiteboard for the day. So a discussion board meeting of the kids, my little whiteboard, and then the modules. These are your unit plans for your lessons. So basically you want to look at this as, you know how you teach standards, right? Every standard has its own drawer in the filing cabinet. And so the modules are these drawers in your filing cabinet, all the different folders. And so I have two modules set up for you guys. Okay, the first module or drawer of my filing cabinet is the welcome back to school drawer. And so I've got all the files that go with that. And then the second drawer I have is how to use learning maps in Canvas. And learning maps in itself, I made a separate video about it. It's a little bit... Um, more in depth, about 10 minutes long, just kind of explaining like why we use learning maps or hyperdocs if you're familiar with the Google platform. 
And so I'm not going to touch on that in this video, but know that it is there for you to go through. Okay, so let's look at the Welcome Back to School module. It has the title of the module, and then I've added a header to it. And the header's not clickable, it doesn't go anywhere. It's just information for the kids. And in the header, I always put what standard we're working on. So in this particular case, the standard that we're working on is that students will be able to identify the course goals and objectives. Because really, the Welcome Back to School module isn't a part of our class standards. But this one here, teachers will be able to design and deliver highly effective content. That would be a sample of a standard. Or, for example, students will be able to um, write an introduction for their argument essay. That would be a standard. Okay. So we have the goal here, then the learning map. You want to think of the learning map as the home page for your unit plan. So this welcome back to school, the goal here, this whole unit, it's about um, introducing my particular class to the kids. So then this learning map, unit plan, whatever you want to call it, it's based on hyperdoc, it has a header that explains what the topic is, and then it has our six categories. Our learning goal is for students to be able to identify the course goals. Our sneak peek gets them excited about it. It gives them some kind of like a joke or a hook or something to gauge their interest, and then a video to activate their prior knowledge. So I've got my goal is that we're gonna talk about language arts course goals. A little joke about language arts teachers to be their hook or their engagement piece. A welcome back video that's going to explain like my course goals and my objectives and class rules and things that will get them thinking and in the mindset of school again. And then I have the live lesson section and that explains because these two things they do on their own. Uh, the live lesson explains how to get to our live lesson class and then a little bit about what we're going to be doing. In this particular case, we're going to be um, doing like a back to school PowerPoint. And so I'm going to be presenting to the kids in the live lesson, the back to school PowerPoint. And then the practice is where they take the knowledge that they've learned during the beginning and they apply it. And so here we talked about that all about me um, discussion board post. They're going to be applying that knowledge by creating their own discussion board post where they're either going to make a PowerPoint slide to introduce themselves or they can choose to record a video. I do think choice is really important when they're doing online assignments and always giving kids a this or that or three or four options. Um, as long as you have a rubric in there and some sort of consistency so that they're all fair across the board, I think it's a powerful component to online teaching. So here they have a choice between doing a PowerPoint slide or a video, but the thing that keeps them in common is that both of them have to have at least 10 facts about the person. So some consistency in the assignment. Okay, and then the gallery is where they're going to display their work to other students and myself. Um, a lot of times I use a gallery more than doing an assignment that just gets turned into me, because it affects... I do an assignment, it gets turned into me, I'm the only one who sees it, and I'm the only one giving feedback. But I think that can get a little um, not encouraging for students. If they're putting it in a gallery or a discussion board, right, where they're posting it up and then other students are getting to see it, one, kids are learning from each other because they're seeing each other's work, and then two, it's instant feedback because now instead of one person commenting on the 150 kids assignments, now you've got 150 people commenting on 150 people's. It's just so much more, um, there's more like instant, more of it, positive praise kind of thing. So we have the gallery and then the level up. And the level up section is basically just going to encourage the kids to go a little bit deeper. So here in the level up, there's a video of 15 reasons why we should be reading more books. And then the kids would do a discussion board post, kind of giving their personal opinions on the topic. And then the second extension activity or level up activity is for them to go to our public library and to check out an e-magazine or an e-book. And I give them the steps on how to do that. 
Okay, so that would be my unit plan or my lesson map for my learning map for that particular standard. Okay, we're going to go back to the practice class. And then each of these pages, the contact me, the library, the student week, is already linked up for you. So you don't have to do anything other than to click the edit button, like for example, okay, school news. It's already linked up to a page for school news. So all you have to do is go into choose edit, and then you can start creating your own content, typing in your own stuff. And um, it's just kind of a quick way for you guys to practice working on canvas all right so let me tell you how to get this class into your canvas okay to import it you're going to go ahead and go to commons and commons is on the left side here commons and then you're going to search on my name so my name is angela a-n-g-e-l-a -E lawrence l-a-w-r-e-n-c-e and let's see it's right here it's called practice class template uh, these are some other templates I've, I've done you're more than welcome to download those but this one we're talking about here it's practice class template and you're going to go ahead and click on the free practice class template and then you're going to come to the right where it says import download you're going to choose that option and then you're going to tell it which class you want to put it in I'm going to put it in, you might want to do like your sandbox where you practice. I've made a My Classroom, which is another practice class. And I'm going to choose to import it into course. Once you get this green bar at the top, you know you're good to go. And basically Canvas takes about 30 seconds to a minute to load it up. And then you can start go ahead and going in and editing your um, content to make it your own. Okay, so this is it for this video. The next video, I'm going to show you how to customize the colors and the buttons and the pictures and all that stuff to make it reflective of your course. So thank you for listening, and please go ahead and subscribe so you can get the rest of my videos.